Welcome to another episode of the Filipino Genealogy Channel. Today, we will talk about genealogical provenance. We will show you how to prove your family tree from generation to generation by presenting a family that can prove its descent from Philippine royalty. Many Filipinos have grown up hearing various family lores such as that they are probably descended from some great and famous families like those of Hari Humabon, Lapu-Lapu, or Lakandula. Many blogs and websites claim these things, with some even posting their family trees in public genealogy sites like MyHeritage and Jenny. Unfortunately, many of these families claiming descent from pre-Hispanic families not only have no proof of descent from these clans, they also show inconsistent and incorrect generational information. This is especially true with family trees found in Jenny.com. Many of the family trees and information here are quite suspect and have no genealogical provenance at all. One family showed complete birth dates for all its members even for ancestors that were born before the founding of their town's church. So where did they get those church records? Who knows? Similarly, trees claiming descent from Lacandula, for instance, always have questionable generational count. For instance, in the Jenny family tree of Jose Rizal, bogus connection has been made to show his descent from Lacandula. But simple math and a whole lot of logic would show us that there is no way that Jose Rizal was separated by just seven generations from Lacandula. Many other families who claim descent from Lacandula also fail in proving the correct number of generations between them and their purported ancestor. In the absence of accurate and empirical data, we cannot accept these claims as factual. is where genealogical provenance comes in. Similar to art, one's genealogy must have proof. Every generation must connect to the next with archival documentation. While nothing is wrong with believing in oral history, families claiming descent from Lapu-Lapu, Lacandula, or Humabon must have documentation for every claim they make about their ancestry. Oral history should be differentiated from real history if they cannot be proven or authenticated. So today, let us show you how to prove your descent from a certain ancestor by providing the proof in every generation. And we're going to look at the Bernardo Santos family. The Bernardo Santos family is one of the few families in the Philippines whose genealogy is well documented and can prove an unbroken, direct, and factual descent from Lacandula, as shown by their genealogical provenance in the next few slides. So let's start with the matriarch of the Bernardo Santos, Veronica. Veronica was born on January 13, 1909, as her birth certificate here on the right side shows. Her certificate shows the name of her parents. Her father was Silverio Bernaldo, who was from Pulilan, Bulacan, while her mother was Aleja Aliwalas, from Kalumpit, Bulacan. Her, baptism, her certificate shows that her mother, by the time of her birth, was just 19 years old. And so, since we're going to look at the, the line of Aleja, it is important that we also have this information. Otherwise, you'll be looking at 
many many records if you do not have the starting date so that's 1909 minus 19 so this is towards the end of the 1800s so generation which is the generation of the parents of Aleha so we have here an 1889 baptismal record of Aleha Aliwalas uh, this is true to what was presented in generation one that Aleha was from Kalumpit as this record is from Kalumpit Bulacan baptismal record of Aleha shows the name of her parents as Julian Aliwalas and Eusebia Aguilar in this case we're going to be looking at the maternal side of Aleha so we are interested in the name of Eusebia's parents which are also given in this record we have Jose Aguilar and Estefania Espiritu so this is already our second and third generation since baptismal records in the past showed also the names of the grandparents so in just one record we have two generations uh, already counted in the record one the fourth generation so we knew that the parents of Eusebia were Jose Aguilar and Epifania Espiritu so we are going to look at their marriage record this time Jose Aguilar married Estefania Espiritu on August 6th 1851 in this record, we see that the parents of Jose Aguilar were Roberto Aguilar and Juliana Salalila. Another important information from this record is it is from this record that we establish the Spanish ancestry of the Aguilars because in this record, Jose Aguilar is described as a mestizo español or Spanish mestizo. So now that we have established the fourth generation, we will go back to the generation of Roberto and Juliana. On this side, we have the fifth generation, the marriage of Roberto Aguilar, who is sometimes called Alberto in the records, who married Juliana Salalila on July 29th, 1815. In this record, we also know that Roberto's parents were Juan Aguilar and Manuela Tolentino. As we can see here, Juan Aguilar is also described as Mestizo Español, thereby uh, proving the Spanish ancestry of the Aguilars. Now, we are interested in the parents of Roberto, who were Juan Aguilar and Manuela Tolentino. So this is now on the sixth generation. We can see here still a marriage record between Juan Aguilar and Manuela Tolentino, who were married on June 14, 1791. Now, we're going to shift to the maternal side again. So we will be looking at the parents of Manuela and the record here shows her parents as Don Francisco Tolentino and Doña Maria Capilli. So let's go to that generation, the seventh. And we have the baptismal record of Maria Capilli. Because we're interested in her line. So Maria Capilli was baptized on January 15, 1746. And her baptismal record gives us the name of her parents who were Lazaro Capilli and Ana de la Cruz. Now, if you notice, we're saying baptized and not born because this record does not give us any information as to how old Maria was when she was baptized. Normally, in later records, uh, they would give us the baptismal date, but they would also mention how old the baby was on that date of baptism. But unfortunately for this record, we don't have that. So we will be using baptism as her reference date. So we'll be looking at the Capilli side. So let's look at Lazaro Capilli for our... For generation eight, we are looking at Lazaro Capilli's baptismal record as well. And here is Lazaro Capilli. 
If you notice, uh, this is a shortened version of his name. That's L A Z with a superscript of O here. This was how many uh, scribes in the past would write names and details of of any information that they wrote to save time and to save paper. So Lazaro Capilli was the son of Francisco Nicolas and Maria de Sena. So Francisco Lazaro was born, baptized on December 3, 1718. And it is his mother, Maria de Sena, who we are interested in. So let's go to the ninth generation from a 1683 baptismal record. And here we see that Maria de Sena was baptized on November 7, 1683, and she is described as the daughter of Don Juan Macapagal and Doña Maria Pascuala. Now, here is the interesting part of the record. The mention of Don Juan Macapagal and Maria Pascuala is something of a, a very welcome information when you find that in your family tree because Don Juan Macapagal was a member of the Macapagal clan of Pampanga and he was one of the descendants of Lacandula as we can as we will see in the next using the records further from the descendientes de Don Carlos Lacandula found at the National Archives we can see the names of the different branches of the family of Carlos Lacandula, the last Raja of Tondo. Now, based on the records looked at and already uh, seen by other academics like the late Luciano P. R. Santiago, we are going to reference his book, uh, his article in the Journal uh, of the University of San Carlos. Um, the houses of Lacandula, Matanda, and Soliman. So, based on his research and based on his use of the records at the National Archives, Descendientes de Don Carlos Lacandula, we can see that Don Juan Macapagal, who was married to Doña Maria Pascuala, was directly descended from Don Carlos Lacandula. So, we can see here that Juan was the son of Eugenio Lapira Macapagal, who was the son of Miguel Alfonso, himself a son of Juan Gonzalo Capulong, the son of Don Dionisio Capulong, who was the son of Raja Lacandula. So, we have connected with just a few generations the family of Veronica Bernardo up to Juan Macapagal and already using the previously published article about the Lacandulas, then we connect him further to his ancestor Carlos Lacandula. As already mentioned earlier, the Bernardo Santos family is one of the very few families who can connect themselves with an ancestor as far and as popular as Lacandula. So, as a review, we have here Bern Veronica Bernardo, daughter of Aleja Aliwalas, who was the daughter of Eusebia Aguilar, daughter of Jose Aguilar, son of Roberto Aguilar, tracing it back to Manuela Tolentino, back to Doña Maria Capilli, up to Lazaro Capilli, then going up to Maria de Sena Macapagal, then way up to Don Juan Macapagal, then Don Eugenio Lapira Macapagal, and then to Don Miguel Alfonso Lapira, and then up to the grandson of Lacandula, who was Don Juan Gonzalo Capulong, the son of Don Dionisio Capulong, who was also the son of Raja Carlos Lacandula. So, in just a few records, we have established every step of the way how the Bernardo Santos family 
is directly descended from one of the oldest and most prominent families in Philippine history, and that of Lacandula. We hope you learned something from this short presentation today, and we hope to see you again in our next videos. Thank you for watching, and stay safe always. Goodbye.